and let's start editing. Now let's do a portrait. I did this portrait with my Nikon Z9 and it's electronic shutter at 2.8. And as you notice, the Nikon Z9 has a larger file size. It's a full frame, just like the Nikon Z6 II, but the Nikon Z6 II is 24 megapixel, but it does low light photos better. And this was done with an ISO of 400 because I want to keep it sharp. So let's start at the top and work our way down. So I want to change this to portrait. There we go. Notice the difference. Automatic difference, right? Auto, let's see what auto does. No, I had it on standard. Remember these are Nikon files. And so the NX Studio is native to Nikon. So it knows what to do with Nikon color signs. It's automatic. It knows what to do. So most professionals will use NX Studio to do the beginning image processing of their images of their portraits so let's do vivid let's see what vivid does no so i'm gonna move back to portraits i like that and rich tone portrait let's see what that looks like mm, so so shadows once we pull the shadows out it might look a bit better so right here, the white balance tells me that I use the flash white balance in the camera. So let's use the white background to expose, but let's wait. Let me bring the exposure compensation up. See what it looks like. There we go. Not too much. It's coming off the edge. Don't want to take it to the right too much. Now, depending on how far you're in the picture or the settings you choose will determine how it goes. Okay, great. It's about where I want it. Let's do the gray point sample tool. See if that improves the color and did it. So let's scroll in a little bit more. And do we like that color? Yes, we do. So let's click back the gray point sample tool and then let's look and see what we have here to work with. Okay, so I like his hair, it's black enough. That rose, since I did 2.8, rose is a little out of focus, but we'll see if, we'll see if we can remedy that. So let's go to active delighting. Let's start off low. Active dynamic lighting. Not too much. Let's go with normal. And that's what you're going to do. You're just going to go down the line. Brightness. Do I want to brightness? Bring it back a little bit. Oh, let me go back the other way. See how I like that. It's too dark. Too bright right about there do i want to add any contrast let's see what that does now i want to go this way and that way then we i want a little saturation i usually do about Oh, about 10 on the saturation, 11 on the saturation. Highlight protection. Let's see what that looks like. I want a little bit, the background a little bit wider. Shadow protection. Let's see what we get here. I want to bring his eyes out here, his darker eyes. So. Let's bring the shadows out a little bit more. All right, so far, let's go back out. We have a lovely photo. We're getting there, we're getting there. So what I wanna do next is I wanna see if I can 
sharpen I, uh, I can always use color booster let's see let's do color booster I can always do color booster but see how that looks eh eh we're just gonna keep that so I want to show you something here it has a little noise in the photo and that's what this is, is noise. So we're gonna correct that. And here we got a, a portrait and impression bounce. Do I wanna use that? Let's see what that does. So these are more for the professionals. I do this in Lightroom and it's a different control now. And this just adds color or takes color away, changes the hue. So we're gonna set that value back to zero. Or you can just do it in here. There we go. And skin softening. So as you noticed, it's looking brighter already. Look at that. We've already improved that. Okay. Next, we're gonna go to noise reduction. Let's see if we can improve the noise. So we're gonna set it on low and see what we get. And without noise reduction, let's see what we get. What do you think? Uh, let's see what normal looks like. Give it a second. We're gonna do normal. Gonna do edge, astro. Looking good already. Look at that. We're looking good. So what I don't want to show is this. I want to just show this portion. Let's go down a little bit further. I want to do some sharpness. Let's go back up to the face in the rows to make sure I don't overdo the sharpening. And so let's do sharpening. See what it looks like. See? Don't want to do too much sharpening. And just notice how that brought out the details. Okay, we're getting there. Retouch brush. Let's do retouch brush. Okay, let's undo that. Control Z. Yeah, let's lower it, the brush size. Let's put it right here. We can always undo it. Let's do it again. Let's lower the brush size. How'd that turn out? See how that turned out. Let's go this way. Turned out okay, but I might want to undo that. Let's see what happened there. Let's undo it. Yeah. So let's go this way. Let's put that back on there. Oh, that is much better. See, I covered that. That is much better. And so that was a retouch brush. Is there any other spots? Normally you want to keep any natural features like molds or anything. So that way uh, people don't think you retouched it as much. He has something on his face right here. So let's see if it, it fixed that. 
see everything's working out right let's go back to the original picture let's escape out of that hit the escape uh, let's hit that so that's off now and then let's go back to the enlargement so when that's available and that is this function still right here so i uh, took care of this oh got one more place right here this place right here i want to touch that up oh that's lovely notice that it fixed that and then i got a spot right here fix that and so what it's doing is it's uh it's looking at the area around it to figure out uh, what it should do and it's doing a very good job so far. It's working better than the previous versions uh, The previous versions that I used in the past didn't work that great, but this is working just right. I can actually use this And then I'll show you how to make a preset out of this So next what I need to do is I need to zoom back out Need to cut that off click it If I want to I can fix this, but I can do it faster in Photoshop or Lightroom. And if you needed to, you could just do this. Brush size, make the brush size a little bit bigger and just do this. So basically what it's going to do is it's just going to take a poll of the area around. See how it's getting less wrinkled. But in Lightroom, I'm sorry, but in Photoshop, I can just do with the AI features and it will automatically just take the whole background out. And I'm just going to put it on a whole new brand new background. See how I took a majority of the wrinkles out? Works great. See, and it's looking better already. Let's go back in. Let's turn it off. Let's go back in. So what I'm going to do with this, notice how that stems too long. Let's adjust one more time. And let me lower the brush threshold. So I intentionally left it this way because I want to make some adjustments myself. Let's see what it does. Oh, let's, let's go back in. Let's do this. Let's let's have it do a redo. Let's do it one more time. Let me make it a little bit larger. Cover more space. Let's see if it does a better job this time. We're getting there. We're getting there. There we go. And let me make it a little larger. All right, see? And we just adjusted that photo with the auto retouch brush tool. And as always, if you don't like that, you can just click the button and it comes back, click it, and it does it again. As always, it's non-destructive. So, see how that, that's looking great already. So next, what I wanna do is I want to crop it. So I'm gonna use the crop tool. So we're gonna do a, we got the option to do a free crop, a custom, a six by nine, a color. I mean, I'm sorry, postcard, a letter, L size, and these other options. But let's do a four, let's see what it does with a four by three. See, four by three. Works great. Get in there. So let's move it the box a little bit more. I want his hands to come down a little bit more. There we go. Do I want to add a little bit more flair and have the box come out that way? Or do I want the box? I want the box that way but that's too much space so 
we could do one that way and we could also change it to a 16 by 9 and we can also do a let's just do a 4 by 3 and we're just going to do this I just want to make sure I get the hands and then I'm going to press enter and then it's going to process and now you have your photo of the young man so what rating will we give this one let's do a fast edit you can always click the right mouse to bring up your fast options so you can output you can export this as it is you can open this with another program right here you can output it you can export it and so we have other options show focus point will it show it on this one no it will not so let's do this let's rate it this is a fast way to rate so i want to make this a five so now it's a five notice how i improved this photo and let's see here i want to add data to it now that i love it see now i can add my data to it but it's already in there because the info tells me I can put when I shot it, it shows lossless compression. So let's export that. I'm kind of liking that. And I already have a folder set up for this. It's exporting. There we go. And this is how you export original image, selected images, export as JPEG. You have the option of TIFF, 16 bit TIFF, 8 bit HEF. You don't want to do HEF. Uh, Apple uses HEF, but uh, not every application reads health, so be careful about that. If you want to do quantity, quality excellent. So what it's going to do is, uh, if you use the highest compression ratio with JPEG, and you just want to post it on social media, you can just post it with the lowest. And then if you're posting it on a photo site, or you're going to give this as a gift, then you want to have it on excellent quality. And so basically, since I cropped it, it is now five megapixel picture. And so we can improve the resolution to 300. And we can remove the camera settings information. We can remove the uh, X, XMP data. And we can add or remove the ICC color profile, which is for professionals and here you can save it in a specified folder and so we're just going to save it in browse don't worry about that i'm just giving nx studio permission to use my folders just a extra we're going to put it in nx studio and from here on in it'll It'll export it to that folder that I just set. So notice we're already in there. So let's go back out of here. You can also do it up here. Quick one. Up here at the top. So there are several options. You can right click to do it quickly. Or you can do it from up here. There's different ways to do the same thing. And that's what the great thing about NX Studio. NX Studio has improved since I last used it. It didn't have most of these features. If you need any more help with uh, NX Studio, you can always go to the help site and you can view the reference manual. And this is NX Studio help. And you can download the product manuals for NX Studio and NX Transfer 2 and get information on each thing about viewing pictures filters enhancing pictures custom picture controls merge pictures taken with pixel shift video editing slideshows uploading pictures to the web printing exporting pictures and options and you can get whatever you need and also menu lists for anything not mentioned in this video thank you for watching and watch my other nx studio videos and my other videos on nikon products Thank you once again.